during the uh, during the Crusades, during the 1300s, and their Damascus constructs of how to make metal are brought over to Europe and improved in Spain, and that's where we get the term Spanish steel. This Spanish steel is being altered just a little bit to, to, by the, these other people. The process of how to make it is being altered so it's faster, so it's simpler, because it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort originally, and as we go through time, it becomes more and more simplistic to do that. But that's the, the point of it is to say that there's definitely two different kinds of doing it that was done, and the quality control was better than a plate. And that's why you care to make chain mail. Because once you made chain mail, and you, and you had quality control already, and it took you hundreds of hours, you verified and you made, made it, it was almost invincible. Once you put this whole kit on that, that Hallbrook and, and Coif and everything, no sword is a sword anymore. It's not a, it's not a club, and you're, and you're wearing and padding, so you're, you're going to be up against a, a bunch of guys with billy clubs, basically. You're not, you, you won't dive unless you get a hit to the face, which is why in Beowulf, almost all of the kills during Beowulf, unless the guy is unarmored, is to the face. Because that's what would break. That's what would be destroyed is those helmets. So your helmet is really where you're going to lose your life. Your coin and your and your, uh, other, uh, your halberd is not going to be punctured. It's not going to be destroyed. It's going to be hits below it and going up and stuff like that that's going to do it until you have pike, which is the long uh, rapier type weapon. So these guys, yeah, you, know, the, you could, a lot of guys would just buy the wire and make it, or you could actually buy, he's got huge sheets of it above him and he's making it, but when it was made, it was person specific. You didn't make, you didn't make a bunch of Hallbrooks and then sell, hey, this is Hallbrook size four. No, it was, you want a Hallbrook? Okay, I've got a sheet, I'm gonna measure you, I'm gonna fit it to you, I'm gonna make something that matches exactly. This is a buddy of mine that I made these for, and the thumbs are two different heights because his hands are asymmetrical. Human beings are asymmetrical. This is fun after you can get this shows your face on one side and the other. It looks like two, and then they take your left side and they invert it so you have two left sides and two right sides, and it looks like two different people. Human beings are asymmetrical, so their armor was perfectly fitted to you instead of making it standardization. And that's actually one of the things that I damages the creation of, of good armor. And people demand absolute standardization in their army versus having your kits, your business. And really, up in, from 400 BC till Napoleon, standardization was ignored. Who cared? It was, you're gonna, have, you're gonna be required to have these, these items in your war kit, and you're gonna be required to maintain them. So you would make them perfectly fit you. How did you figure out with your friend that he had longer thumbs? Did you measure or did I you literally put it on in his hand 500 times, basically. Okay. I put it on his hand and it fit a little better. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add more here. And it fit a little better and then add more here. And it fit a little better and add more there. I measured him over and over and over and over and over until I got it right. So it wasn't until you had completed both of the uh, pieces? That I noticed that there was a difference. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, a lot of a lot of times you see online. Well, here's here's how to make this item. And there's an X number here, an X number there, an X number here, an X number there of, of rings. That's that's not, in my opinion, based on the research and and the, and the surviving pieces, not how it was done that day. It was okay. You want it how far down on your shoulders? You want it to look like this? You want it to look like that? Because almost all the surviving pieces don't look alike. Almost none of them because standardization wasn't a thing. We didn't, they didn't care about it. And that's kind of what you need to remember when you look at all these pieces of armor and you say, well, it looked like this. No, no, that one looks like that. That guy looks like that because that guy wanted it to look like that. And with the Vikings, they would, you know, after a while, they got enough and the females would join in uh, to, to the fighting and, and do whatever they need to do, especially if they were being, if they were being attacked. They put on chain mail too. It would, their armor would look the same. To the point that when the, the 
Romans invade Britain, and they're pushing up to where they eventually build Hadrian's Wall, and they're fighting the Picts and these other guys. He's, they don't know what gender or if they're even human because of the armor they're wearing. They finally capture one of them, bring, him, bring them in, strip them, and find out, oh, it's a girl. So they, they ask her, well, why, why are you fighting us? Why is there a bunch of girls fighting us? And is it her response? The men are all in the fields. It's just, it just, you know, it works. People were just, this works, so I'm doing it. It didn't matter. All these people trying to say, well, this was this way and this was that way. No, it just was whatever it fit. Whatever worked was done. They're in the field, so I'm going to go fight them because we're being attacked. It just made sense and they did it. People didn't have this, like, strict thing in every culture. They had it in some, but most cultures just, we're going to do what we're going to do because we need to survive. Now, when they started doing these things, like in Byzantium, which is just another word for Rome in the East after a little while, they started adding chainmail to plate to make it work both jobs. And you see where it changes direction? It's going one way, and it changes direction on this piece here? Because it stops being protecting the head and starts being protecting the body. And it needs to move a different way when it change, that's why it's changing directions. It needs to move differently. How, how do you change the direction when you're making it? Because you're literally linking every piece. Usually you make the bottom strap and you make the top one and then you just link them together. Oh, I see. Okay. So you, you don't, you're not actually just, it's all of a sudden changing a funny direction. You just, you've made this uh, collar basically and then you attach it to the piece coming off of the helmet. Gotcha. And that's somewhat similar to what I've done here, where I've just attached it straight down. There's a little bit of a difference where I've actually attached it onto the, to the leather and into the neck. But these are, this is normal, at, and this is the way things were done, because you just, you'd put as much chain as you could between you and your opponent, because it would diffuse the impact, it would slide it off, and make you uh, almost invincible to guys in armor. Yeah. And so, what you had, you had low kill counts, really, when these people hit each other. Most of the time, if you were going to kill somebody and you were wearing armor, it wasn't the other guy in armor, it was the peasant. You're going to kill the slave and the peasant if you're wearing armor. You're not going to kill the other guy in armor, because it's just too hard. You're amazing if you can take out somebody in armor, which is why the Vikings would raid villages, and whenever they got an army to come against them, they'd run. They'd hop aboard their ships and take off, because they knew that armor to armor, it's going to be a blood, it's going to be the stalemate until somebody gets tired enough that they can get a random hit in. Because shields, this is a late uh, period uh, version of, of it, but shields cover most of your body, and then this is actually a dueling shield mock, but uh, this is the very concept. But you're covering most of your body with a, with a chunk of, a big chunk of metal. And or a big chunk of wood with metal reinforcing the, the border, and then you're wearing chainmail, so you're you're not gonna hurt me, no matter how many times you hit me or my shield. My shields were replaced. Your armor you could hand down to your kid. Your shield was a one-off. Every battle you had to make it or buy a new shield. Shields were replaced constantly, unless it was a ceremonial one. Armor was not. People who say, well, they, uh, you know, they, they, you see these things, well, this was a uh, this old shield. That's because it was buried with the guy and not really used, because if it was really used, it was destroyed. But chainmail, if it's used a hundred times, it's just used a hundred times, and it's still good. You mentioned that uh, this would be passed down from generation to generation. And you'd revamp it. Okay. You would reset it to fit you. Gotcha. And you can do that with chainmail. That's one of the other things why I think Romans didn't... Uh, use rivets is because if it's just butted, resetting it to the next guy is really easy. You just take the, your pliers, you pop it back open, you redo it, and close them back up, and there you go. So resetting it to every size, shape, and, and function of these people, and a lot of these guys, it was changed five, six, seven hundred times, but you only notice because the chain mail is still just that four in one pattern. It might be a little bigger, it might be a little smaller, but it's still in the form of a pattern, so you don't really see huge 
oh, well, that's new armor and that's old armor. It's, it's just steel, and if it's well kept, it doesn't look different. This is not well kept, but this is well kept, and this is well, these are roughly the same age. But this is, no, actually, this is a little old. This one's actually about 10 years old. And now the only reason it looks like this is because I left it with my sister, who basically left it in their kid's playroom uh, to just goof around with it. So this has just been sitting in Utah the whole time. All right, now for Byzantium, we have, when did it end? This is a big question, right? This is a, I, <laughs> I'm gonna be a little dark here. Can someone read me this date? Go ahead. September 1898. What? Chainmail is in September 1898? In North Africa it does. These guys, this picture is somewhat wrong. These guys, all these guys facing the British, should all be wearing that. But this, this is the, this is the dramatic, this is the British, uh, oh, we, we defended ourselves in these, these, dis, these disgusting little, you know, throwbacks. It, it, it's a propaganda picture, but it's the best one I had. But it's, it shows that they've got shields, they've got spears, they had chainmail under their, her uh, robes, because that's what you would wear. You wear your fabric over top, and that's why you have these guys with the, 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 the Templars you see, you know, the big, big fat piece of fabric over top, and the chainmail underneath. It's because they went to the mayor and realized, I put a piece of fabric over it, it doesn't get hot from the sun, and I have a piece of fabric flax and, and cools me off. The taverns. That's why taverns were created, is because of going to the Middle East and you're like, it's, it's really hot if I have metal hot burning me. But this is the last time it shows up in a major conflict. What's funny is this battle, the Battle of Umderman,